Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Good evening. It's KSO Today, Thursday, February 27, 2020. You're listening to Derek Young of K-State Online doing this edition of KSO Today. It's going to be just a big, long discussion on Scotty Hazelton and uh, the, the situation surrounding him. In case you weren't aware, Scotty Hazelton has a standing offer to be the defensive coordinator at Michigan State. And though we are not completely confirming that he is taking the gig, as we don't have 100% confirmation, it certainly seems like it is headed in that direction that he will choose to leave Manhattan for East Lansing and lead the Spartans defense. Um, most of that is due to, a, a, well, a financial windfall for him. He will be compensated heavily for this move to East Lansing, where he will be the Spartans defensive coordinator if he accepts the job. And assuming that he does, his salary will net him just about a million dollars is the expectation. And it could be more than that. Um, and that's something that Kansas State could not compete with. However, Kansas State's not going cheap here, and I know that's going to be a buzzword that everyone wants to say. They just can't compete with a salary of paying assistance a million dollars salary. Really, that's what it comes down to. It, and, and it's not every school can do that. Kansas State competed with Mississippi State when they offered the defensive coordinator position to Scotty Hazelton. They competed with Washington State when they offered him the defensive coordinator position. He has had other options before today, before the Michigan State one has arose. It was at Mississippi State under Mike Leach. It was at Washington State under their new head coach, Nick Rolovich. Kansas State gave him a raise that was yet to be announced to compete with those two schools when they tried to lure him away, and they won. They could not be Michigan State. That was a that was a bridge too far. Uh, they probably needed to get well over 700000 for Hazelton to deter him from making such move, and I don't think that's something that they could reasonably make sense of. And um, that's just the, the nature. That's that's reality of, of where their budget is. Um, and and it's not that the budget isn't increasing. I think that it is, but they also have other investments that they still need to make in terms of catching up with the rest of the college football world when we're talking about support staff, when we're talking about recruiting department, two areas where they haven't attacked as much as they would have liked to do. Um, those things need to be considered. And if that means you know, not being able to overpay for them for themselves, Scotty Hazelton, that, that's what it means. Um, it's unfortunate, but that looks like it's, it's headed in that direction. Um, he liked Manhattan. He wanted to stay, but also he, he has to be able to look his family in the eyes and make the best decision for himself. And if the two, the two schools are really that different, it's hard to say no to the one offering, you know, probably $300,000 more. And I think that's what reality was in this situation. Now, good looking forward. If you're Kansas State, what do you do? Uh, Timing is not necessarily on your side here, and not probably for the reason that everyone assumes it is, especially with me talking. They'll be like, well, this probably isn't good for recruiting. The dead period ends in two days, I, or three days. I don't think it's really that much of a deterrent or that much of a kick in the butt when it comes to recruiting. I think it's been well established, at least on our site, who our site that provides, you know, literally by a mile, the best recruiting coverage one can find. And if you don't believe us or need to be convinced of us, give us a try if you, if you haven't done so already. But Scotty Hazleton wasn't the most active recruiter, and he would tell you that. He wasn't the most active recruiter. I think he was, in ways, he almost wore that like a badge of honor. But recruiting won't be hit with his ouster, or his, not ouster, his departure. Um, and it won't be a hit not having him on the road or not having they they probably don't want to waste too much time in making this uh higher but that has more to do with spring football than it does recruiting the spring evaluation period doesn't start until i believe april 15th or around that so i that's when you definitely need a full staff for recruiting purposes during during that during that time frame however for the purpose of now I, i'm talking about rec- you know, on the field stuff, you know, spring football starts March 17th, March 18th. Got to have a hire done by then. 
I, they'll probably have a higher done in a week. I'm not really worried about that. But when spring football starts everywhere in the next two weeks, some have already started. Some are going to start tomorrow. Some are going to start next week. When it's already started, it's hard to pluck away a football coach. Uh, Michigan State was able to do that because they're doubling Kleiman, or Hazleton's salary from last year. He was making 550000 at Kansas State last year. They're going to pay him around a million. They literally, they're literally going to double his salary. I'm not sure what candidate qualified that fits their criteria that Kansas State can do that for. They just, you know, resources are, li are a little bit more limited. Um, so it's going to be hard to pluck away. What, who does that help? It would help an in-house candidate. Who is the best in-house candidate? Probably the only in-house candidate, if you're asking me, and that's Joe Klanderman. He was the safeties coach this past year. He worked under Chris Kleiman in Fargo, and now he works under him in Manhattan. He's raved about by Kleiman. We're very well respected by his players. He's very intelligent, smart, calculated, um, composed, just, you know, every a lot of the traits you would expect for in a coordinator or even a future head coach if we're going to be honest um and and i think he would fit that you know he that in-house option um and to be honest i mean scotty hazel's been raved about him he trusted him a lot so if we're talking about an in-house option not sure there's another one besides joe Klander. um going forward out of house options which one makes sense which one's uh, probably a familiar face blake siler Yes, he played at Kansas State. Yes, he was a defensive line coach at Kansas State. Yes, he was a linebacker coach at Kansas State. Yes, he was a defensive coordinator at Kansas State in Bill Snyder's final season. Um, he was going to be on Chris Kleiman's initial staff. He was on Chris Kleiman's initial staff. He was a defensive ends coach. Um, and then when he left for West Virginia to be the linebackers coach under Neil Brown, Kleiman hired Buddy Wyatt. What does, you know, how does this all factor? It's the timing thing again. I don't love the timing. I think the timing of this void probably makes it a little bit of a tougher sell for Coach Seiler because unlike you know the rumor out there, people wanted to start something about there being bad blood be between Blake Seiler and Kansas State because they didn't hire him to be defense coordinator. Chris Kleiman didn't retain him as a defense coordinator. That was never could be anything farther from the truth there was no bad blood in fact those two are pretty well fond of each other and they have a really good working relationship and i think that it's developed into a friendship outside of work as well so that's not a roadblock nothing to be seen in terms of that why did siler leave that would be the next question he left because he thought he needed to spread his wings and really expand his connections and, and just everything in the coaching world because he has you know ambitions and dreams and he wants to accomplish those and you know he's always staying in the same spot probably was going to hold back some of that i guess growth potential so leaving kind of made sense it was for a power five job it was to be back in control of the, of the linebackers and the bonus on top the cherry on top of the sunday and probably at the end of the day the most the biggest deciding factor because family is family it can be closer to his wife's family um some, some, some of the older people in her family that were, that they wanted to be close to and, and they're, they're, you know, in some of the last years, especially uh, the grandkids being able to see their grandparents. So that was important. He's still able to do that when he left West Virginia this off season to be the defensive coordinator at Old Dominion and work under old friend Ricky Ronnie. I'm still able to do that. So for him, to go away from that family connection where he initially made the move for, um, probably going to have to make it financially make sense, give him an offer that he couldn't refuse the same way the Michigan State seems to have made an offer that Scotty Hazleton can't refuse. Um, I think Kansas State's going to have to do that if they want, Siler. We'll see. We are told that they're probably going to interview some outside candidates. Siler makes sense as one. Another one that make, makes sense is Javon DeWitt. He worked at Nebraska under Scott Frost the last few years as a linebackers coach. He has now left Nebraska and Scott Frost to coach at North Carolina in Chapel Hill under Mac Brown. Um, I think that's, he's a name to know, I, I believe. I think Chris Kleiman has considered him for uh, a role at Kansas State before. I think they've discussed a Kansas State coaching position for him before. I think it was defensive coordinator before. So having said all that, them having their connection, their relationship, 
Um, and having pretty much interviewed him before, or at least considered him for the, the, the same role before, I would uh, think it'd be a surprise if he didn't go back and at least talk to Javon DeWitt again. I think there will probably be more names that we hear about. For right now, I'm not really hearing anything. I don't, I'm, I don't think they made contact with any of them, so to speak, and they still might be waiting a little bit on how this all fizzles out. I think it's headed in the direction that Coach Hazleton leaves, but at the end of the day, hasn't happened yet. It's not confirmed. We think it's going to happen, but that doesn't mean it will. It just seems like it's headed in that direction. If it does, my short list that I would anticipate them working off of would be Klanderman, Seiler, and DeWitt. That doesn't mean they will, but I would be surprised if they don't at least talk to those three. I will wrap this up now. Hope you enjoyed this edition. I hope you invest in the site if you haven't already. I hope that if you aren't going to invest in the site, that you continue to invest in us. We will continue to pump out a product for everyone to read, everyone to hear, everyone to see. You've been listening to KSO today. I'm Derek Young, K-State Online. Tell your friends.